Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and today I thought I'd share a little bit about um, stitching with Whisper Thread. I've been working on Royal Holiday this week and kind of finally found my groove with this um, challenging thread. Here on the card you'll see it says cross stitch one ply, needle point two ply on 18 count. Hopefully you can see that. And um, so I'm using one ply, this is technically 16 because it's two over two on 32 count, um, but I'm using one ply. How I have found that finally works for me is I'll unroll this four lengths, of uh, four crinks in the thread. You can see that here. One, two, three, four, and then I'll cut it here. Because I found with if I do three crinks, it gets it's too short to be usable. By the time you get stitching, it's done, and that's really annoying. Any longer than this, and it starts to fall apart or become so thin um, that you can see through it on the fabric, or there's zero fuzz left. Um, so this is kind of the length I've discovered works for me. This is about see if we can measure this for you. It's probably about um, eight inches. I use my regular needle, which in my case is a 26, um, 20 size 26 needle. Um, there's the eye. I don't know that I would recommend a 28 because it's a little bit tricky to, to thread this stuff. So what I like to do is pick the end that looks the most fuzzy and thread that fuzziest end because then, and they're kind of about the same this time, I think I'll choose this one, because then you'll have less fuzz complicating matters um, when you run it under your fabric to start your thread. And I, I leave an itty bitty little tail. Oh, I didn't show that, sorry, I'll show that. How I thread Whisper Thread is I take the thread, put the needle under the thread right at the eye where it's a little bit sharp, fold it under, fold it over the, th fold it over the needle so it's got a nice crisp fold, pull the needle out and then thread the needle with, this is hard to do now that I'm watching through the viewfinder. I thread the fold into the eye of the needle. I don't know if you could see that, but there's the fold. I put the fold through because otherwise it's like impossible to get this little tip in. If you don't want to do that, you can always use a needle threader. That works as well. I leave an itty bitty little tail because this is literally like one inch or maybe three fourths of an inch because everything past, ev this whole tail will be mostly useless by the time it's if it goes through the fabric is a double strand right here it wears away a lot of the um, fuzz and whatnot so sometimes I'll, I'll move it down even farther when I'm at the very end but I I keep the tail really really short um, so that I waste as little thread as possible so that's how I thread my whisper thread and I, I run my fabric under, I must admit I have still not tried the pin stitch starting method. I don't know how that would work with whisper thread if you try it, you know. That would be fine. Be careful at the end because sometimes the little wispies can masquerade themselves as thread as it did right there. And the wispy just came off. <laughs> And I'll try that again. Because um, you want to make sure you catch the actual thread under the stitches and not just the wispy part. Because then it won't stay. I think that's okay. Be very gentle the first couple stitches because it might just fall out. So, And I'm not in camera. So let's fix that. Let's see. So I'll pull it gently. I want to double check. The 
that it doesn't pull through and then I can start stitching. I need to get to where I can see my stitching and you can see my stitching. There we go. And when I when I pull it through, I'll show you my next time I come up. I don't pull just from the needle because otherwise it will break right right here. I'll put my finger here and actually tug the actual thread, not my needle. My needle's a little bit loose right there. But it's still close to the needle so that when I go back, it's still kind of, I can still grab the needle and keep control of the needle, but I don't pull with the needle. I pull the actual thread because to take some of the strain off of, off of this joint right here, because this where it hits the needle is the weakest point and it will, it will fray, it will break, it will completely disintegrate right there if you're pulling on it. So that's kind of the trick that I've come up with is to like grab the actual thread when I pull it through and pull it through by the thread, not by the needle like I would normally do. and forward I'm sorry there we go sometimes it's a little fuzzier than other times I'm kind of stitching far away here it's hard to see the holes um, and sometimes you'll get clumps of fuzz that you're gonna need to rearrange on the string like I'll just set the needle aside and kind of fluff up the string sometimes. I haven't seen that yet on this string, but, um, and if you get a really big clump, sometimes you're, it'll fall off and, or you'll just, uh, need to pull it off because it's getting in the way. Um, quite temperamental little fuzzy thread here, but it, it does have a nice look. It does make it look wintry and warm. Right here is a big chunk of it. Um, I don't know how well it's focusing for you, but it does have a fun look, but it is kind of a pain to stitch with. What I've been doing this week is w stitching one of these eight inch lengths of thread, whisper thread, and then stitching a normal size length of DMC somewhere else in this area um, to kind of go back and forth so that it's not... Um, not so tiring because such a short length can be, I don't know, it's rough because you feel like you're just getting going and then you stop. So I don't like working with such a short length, but, and it's a little bit um, fiddly. So it's actually not giving me too much trouble at the moment. I'll finish stitching this whole thread for you so you can see what it looks like at the end. And I'm not looking at my pattern right now because I'm just filling in this section. All the DMC in this area has been finished, so this whole um, empty area right here is all whisper thread. So I'm just going through and filling it in um, as I can. There's a lot of whisper thread on this pattern. Towards the end of the string, sometimes a lot of the fuzz will have worn off and it looks very thin. If you don't like that look, you can just cut your string off and um, start a new one. Since it's so annoying to work with this, I want to try to get as long of a string as I can and still maintain fuzz. Um, but I will, I will continue to work it even if it looks thin, just because there's maybe some patches where it's thin and some patches where it's thick. Oh, in the overall chunk in the, that section. 
but I think it looks okay. It doesn't look obviously thin. It it looks fluffy and in some, I mean, it's, it's more realistic maybe, like to be a little bit more patchy because then it might give you the appearance of at more texture, I guess, if there's some patches that are fluffier than others. So that doesn't bother me. And I just, I just work the thread until it's done. But that's also why I don't have a longer string. Because if I were to work with a longer string than I do, the there would be a, a large chunk of very thin thread. And I, I don't want too much of that going on because I do want it to stay fluffy as much as I can. So I'm getting to the end here. And you can see the tail is pretty much combined with the other thread. Um, I might try to separate it and shorten the tail just a little bit to see if I can finish this. See, I don't even know which one was the tail. That one's the tail. I'll come down just a touch, but you can see it's getting really thin right here. So I don't want to go too far and have it completely fall apart. I do want to finish this row if I can. And I stitch, I don't know what this is called, continent, not continental. I know English method is where you stitch one X at a time. I stitch, unless it's variegated thread, which this is not, I stitch the first leg, then one direction in a row and then back the other way. I had a lot of questions on that in my last stitch along video. So I think this is as far as I'm gonna take it because that's really short and really, really fraying. So here you have my itty bitty little thing and I'll just run it under like I would any other stitch or thread. And that's all I'm left with. It's this tiny little fuzz at the end. <laughs> so um, that's how I have found Whisper Thread works best for me. I get a little chunk done with about an eight inch string with a short tail and um, break it up with other sections in. I could, if I'm close to the end of a section, I might do two or three strings just to finish it up um, because it feels good to finish a section. But um, that's with the bulk of uh, a lot of this pattern has Whisper. I think I'm gonna do that for the rest of the bottom of this design where I will go back and forth because even if when I finish this section, there's more down here and there's more all along, all along here. So there's gonna be a lot of whisper. So I'm just gonna plug away at it um, as I do the rest of this. So hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions that I didn't um, answer for you regarding whisper thread, feel free to ask and happy stitching.